Nisekoi was this romance manga that was relatively popular in Jump for a while, got a two-season anime. It was a decently big deal for a while. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about it, but just to give a, a real quick rundown of what the general idea is. There's this guy named Ichijo, he's the son of the Yakuza, and he loves this girl at school named Onodera, but then this girl named Chitoge comes in, who is the daughter of the Mafia, and uh, the Yakuza and the Mafia have been feuding for a long time, and the, the two people that are heading the Yakuza and the Mafia are like, Good idea, smart idea, let's fake pair. Uh, our daughter and son together and make them fake lovers so that the people within the Mafia and Yakuza will stop feuding and everything will be hunky-dory and thus starts a fake and relatively poor relationship that blossoms into, you guessed it, a real loving relationship with love and all that stuff. Oh, oh boy, marriage and whatever else high schoolers in anime do, I don't know. <laughs> I read this series as it came out and there's a, a lot of really positive stuff in it, but there's also... <sighs> there's some shit in here that just does not work at all. Starting with the positives, I guess, since it, it, it's a series I enjoy and I kind of want to talk about what I enjoy about it first so that people who are interested in it can go and check it out and then they can hear about the negatives and, 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 and just, just, just one minute. One, I think that the setting is actually fantastic. In rom-coms, uh, the setting is usually a lot more important than in other genres of anime or manga, simply because the setting significantly alters the, ways, uh, the way the characters interact, which is kind of a big deal in rom-coms, because the entire basis for the story, the entire reason people read it is for character interactions. The romantic attraction is all based on character interactions, uh, you know, like, I can watch uh, Tanjiro fight people in a forest or in a, in a fucking desert, and it would still be interesting, um, because I the setting doesn't necessarily really affect the way characters interact in that story in a way that's significant enough for it act, to like actually change the pace of things. Um, Rom-coms, on the other hand, are based entirely in those character interactions, and as such, setting is pretty important. The actual setting itself is just like high school and really basic, uh, you know, Japan stuff, but the Yakuza and the Mafia bit actually makes it work in a significantly different way and makes the character interactions feel kind of more interesting and gives reason for these characters to be interacting. So it's not just happening for the sake of happening. They didn't bump into each other. There's not like some random bullshit where it's like, oh, you know, I met- my mother met your mother two minutes ago, and they hit it off, and now we're engaged. Like, <laughs> no. The relationship they're also put into is meant to be fake. So it's not like uh, in a lot of other rom-com anime where it's like a forceful, hey, you're getting- you're getting fucking married, whether you like it or not. It's just, hey, for a little while, fake being this person's boyfriend, fake being this person's girlfriend, and after that certain point, you guys can quit it, go back to your daily lives. We're not like- greatly inconveniencing you. You know, you're not fucked for life, pretty much. You know, you don't have to marry this person. So overall, I think that kind of breeds interesting character interactions that are, for the most part, pretty believable. And I enjoyed that part of Nisekoi a lot. And I think uh, another thing I really love about Nisekoi is just the general style. I think the artwork is super pretty. I think it, it works really well for the series. I think from day one, the artwork was actually really good. And then at, you know, final day, last volume, it was even better than it was at day one. So overall, the series just looks great and it reads really easily. It's good. I think it's worth a read. That being said, here comes the, the shit. The whole plot is, isn't necessarily just based around the fact that, uh, you know, Shitoge and Ichijo are dating for the sake of the Mafia and the Yakuza. There's also part of the plot that's about uh, how Ichijo made a promise with this promised girl and how he's wearing this locket that can only be unlocked by a specific key that the promised girl has. This point of the plot itself is not the problem. Let me be incredibly upfront about that now. It's not the problem. Um, I actually think it's really good for the story. I think it gives some mystery to the whole narrative. I think it gives reason for Ichijo to be kind of hesitant about going in any which way, any direction, because every single part of his harem uh, has met him in the past, has the potential to be the promised girl. And then all of that shit falls off 
just so hard. It is forgotten by the author in fucking milliseconds. After the first few volumes, and after all the characters have been introduced, there's so infrequently any mention of this point in the plot, right? It goes away, just entirely, which is so unsatisfying. I, I, I want this point in the plot to be a larger focus in this story because Pat, well, like once we get past the initial setting, which is cool, we don't have a whole lot to grab onto other than the character interactions. And even though those are the main focus, even though that's the, the purpose of the story, we lose this really, really important narrative element that gives some form of mystery that keeps people on their toes, keeps people reading. That narrative is, is kind of lost. And even though in the end, I think it pays off, it doesn't pay off throughout the narrative. It doesn't provide a, a, a sense of mystery throughout the narrative. It just provides something at the end where you're like, holy shit, wow, okay, cool. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I think in the end it serves as a good plot point. I think it's a good fucking idea. And I think the general progression of it would have been amazing if the series didn't have filler. And here's where shit kind of starts to hit the fan. Bad. Like, bad, bad. This series has 25 volumes. 25 full volumes. I own every single one. One all the way to 25. I read this series strictly physically. That is the only way I read this series. I never started reading it online. And when I started reading it, there were, I, th I believe, about eight volumes out at the time. So I could buy from volume one to volume eight, and then I would have to wait until the release of every single volume uh, monthly, or I believe it's monthly. A little over the halfway point through the series, I ran into this problem. This, this really, really big issue. The series was getting fucking boring. The whole intrigue of the setting had worn off. They had already forgotten about the promised girl bit. There was no new information coming out about that. And what we got instead was just character interactions, which inherently isn't an issue. Again, character interactions are the backbone of literally every single rom-com series. If the character interactions aren't good, then the series is gonna suck. If the character interactions are good, the series is going to be carried till the very end. Nisekoi, um, however, didn't do a great job keeping its character interactions feeling fresh, or unique, or frankly important. Most rom-com kind of have the, the main character and whoever his romantic interests are, uh, getting closer over the course of time. They get closer and closer and closer after incidents, so their character interactions slightly change, and you can see the progression of their relationship. Nisekoi had done that, effectively, with every single individual character, by about, like, the halfway point of the series, give or take. Every single character that had been introduced at that point was madly in love with Ichijo. Just straight up. There was no further steps for the mangaka to take in order to make these characters get any closer to Ichijo because they were already as close as they could be. Despite this, we still had one-on-one -on -one character moments with Ichijo and the rest of the cast, despite the fact that they had literally no potential character development to be had. So it was just the same shit we've seen already recycled over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. A lot of people who don't read rom-coms think that filler is like, oh, they go out and they go shopping together. That's fucking filler. And in something like Naruto or One Piece or Dragon Ball, yeah, it would be. But we're talking about a rom-com, right? Where character interactions are key and where that shopping trip can make these characters grow closer, which counts as progression. It doesn't count as progression in something like a shonen action battle manga, but it counts as progression within a rom-com. What filler really is, is, is Nisekoi. Nisekoi is filler. Nisekoi has this massive chunk where absolutely fucking no character interaction happens that is genuinely progressive. Time and time and time again, we get the exact same character interactions just in slightly different settings that, again, do not alter the character interactions at all. It's just the same shit. That's filler. 
because there's no progression in character interaction there's no character development there's nothing there and this is a good chunk of the end portion of nisekoi shit starts happening in the final few volumes but it takes a long 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 time as someone who's reading this in volumes like monthly as it came out i fucking hated the end stretch of nisekoi it was the most painful unenjoyable experience i've ever had reading a rom-com because i knew what the series could do i knew that the series was good and had the potential to be good it was just stretching out its welcome for no fucking reason is this how naruto fans feel <laughs> <laughs> is this how they fucking feel when they watch the anime? All in all, this series would have been am amazing, right? It would have been a great rom-com that ended in a nice way that had a decent mystery going behind it until the very end when everything was announced and revealed and, and you'd be like, wow, that's really cool. And then Ichijo would get with the girl and that's it, you know? But filler filler sucks and filler happened and i just wish that the mangaka could come up with a way to keep the series naturally going without having to make us repeat the exact same character interactions again just with a slightly new coat of paint because that's boring as fuck and i think that the series while worth reading gets boring as fuck towards the end i was i was so close to dropping it and I had kept up this like monthly purchasing habit where I would get Nisekoi um, every single month give or take and that fell off hard at the end like hard hard I didn't get the last volume until about a year after it released I just I couldn't I just couldn't I was so burnt out the things I loved about the series were just being repeated over and over and over again in a way that didn't make them new or unique and kind of just soured my entire perception on the series as a whole. Nisekoi was absolutely mutilated by filler. That's that's the only way I can put it. The entire series was significantly worsened by that last stretch. It's so unfortunate because I think that the series as a whole would have been amazing if, if it just didn't start dragging so hard. And uh, that's kind of my entire take on Nisekoi. It would have been great if it didn't have more filler than fucking Naruto. So, uh, unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. That being said, if you haven't watched Nisekoi, I'd recommend giving it a shot. There's got to be some type of, like, reading order shit that you can look up where it'll be like, Hey, skip these chapters. So, if you can find one of those, please link me down below. Because that would be an incredible way to reread this series without, you know, making me want to die. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.